Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Recently on one of my radio programs, uh, one of the callers asked, well, how do oats lower your cholesterol? Why are they heart healthy? And I thought this may be a good topic to cover quickly on one of these episodes. Hi, my name is Jerry Hickey. I'm a nutritional pharmacist. I'm also the uh, chief scientific officer over here at Invite Health. And welcome to our episode, Oats and Cholesterol. It's a very simple conversation we're going to have. Oats are loaded with fiber. There's the husk, which has a very high concentration of fiber. Now, the husk is the hull. It's the outer shell of the oat seed. And then right below that, the first layers that are edible are the bran. That's also loaded with fiber. And they're loaded with different kinds of fiber. They're loaded with insoluble fiber and soluble fiber, such as beta-glucans. So how does this lower cholesterol? Well, soluble fiber and insoluble fiber help absorb the cholesterol and the saturated fats that are in your food. So one way they have value is they help lower the amount of cholesterol that could be absorbed, like a sponge basically. They'll absorb some of the cholesterol in your bowels. But they have a second activity. They're not soluble. You can't digest them. You can't absorb many fibers. The insoluble fibers you cannot absorb. So your body doesn't know this. Your digestive system doesn't know this. And how do you break down fats to absorb them? You release bile acids. And what's a major component of bile acids? Cholesterol. So when you eat fiber throughout the day, uh, you're releasing bile acids to break it down. Yet that's not working, so you keep on releasing bile acids, which have to be replaced. They're replaced by taking some of the cholesterol out of the system and devoting that to making more bile acids. So one way you're blocking cholesterol is by actually inhibiting the absorption in the intestines. A second way is you're taking cholesterol out of the bloodstream. And beta-glucans help do that also. Beta-glucans are very interesting. You find beta-glucans in mushrooms, and in mushrooms, the beta-glucans are more involved with stimulating the immune system. But the beta-glucans in oats are different. So basically, they're working. The beta-glucans in oats, just to emphasize, they're not immune system stimulants. They're more with removing cholesterol. And the thing is that you need a good serving of, of oats. Now, of course, if you have whole oats, like, like whole oats, like steel-cut oats, you have to cook them. And if you're using instant oatmeal, that's kind of like eating sugar. You know, when you could cook it very quickly, oats should take about 20 minutes to cook. Of course, oat bran, you can eat raw. Usually they eat oat bran raw. So this has just been a very quick episode. Oat bran is part of a healthy diet. In fact, we added to one of our products called Sterols Plus HX. It's red yeast rice, which helps inhibit the manufacture of cholesterol by your liver. Sterols, uh, a type of fat from plants that helps block the absorption of cholesterol from your food. And then the oat bran, which basically is taking the cholesterol out of your um, bloodstream. But it's the oat bran that's high in the beta-glucans. In fact, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, allows us to make claims for the oat bran beta-glucans and for the sterols would help to lower cholesterol, so that's a good thing. But it's certainly a good part of your diet. Uh, other, other reasons to eat oat bran or fiber in general. One, some fibers have been proven to lower the, the risk of colon cancer. Uh, basically, psyllium husks and, and um, whole wheat fiber have been shown to lower the risk of colon cancer. They have the most evidence behind them. Uh, psyllium is a plant related to the banana family, believe it or not. And uh, um, 
the thing is that oats also fill you. They're absorbing greasy fats and sugars in your intestines. So they do a lot of things for the heart and they can help keep you, uh, make it easier for you to control your weight because they really are filling and they're displacing other absorbable sugars, etc., other fatty foods, fattening foods, I should say. Now, what about oats and celiac disease? That is controversial. There are ingredients in oats that kind of look like gluten, but they're not gluten. Uh, but also, a, a big problem with oats is they're thrown on trucks and in packages with wheat or where wheat has been carried previously, so they get cross-contaminated. But some people don't react to oats at all. And let's talk about that gluten issue to begin with. Let's talk about wheat. It's important just to cover that very quickly. Uh, there's wheat sensitivity. Anybody can have that because the gluten is hard to digest. In fact, uh, the word gluten comes from a Latin word for paste. It's just hard to digest. So anybody cutting back on gluten generally feels a little bit better because it kind of stresses out the digestive tract. Uh, then there's actual wheat allergy. But then there's celiac sprue, which is really nasty. Because in celiac sprue, these people are having autoimmune reactions that could really destroy their health. I mean, they wind up with damage to their digestive tract, and then they can't absorb other nutrients like vitamins and minerals. So it's really bad for their health. Uh, they wind up with um, all sorts of aches and pains. Some of them get headaches. Um, some of them get muscle pain. Many of them get fatigued. And of course, just about all of them get intestinal uh, inflammation and intestinal pain. So when it's celiac, you just have to avoid gluten, period. However, with wheat allergies, which is a step down from celiac, um, they've shown that certain probiotic bacteria help with those allergies, like uh, Lactobacillus plantarum and Lactobacillus rhamnosus de help to decrease allergenicity to certain foods, including wheat. And then there's just a wheat sensitivity. Just cut back. You're probably eating too much wheat because people will have bread in the morning or cereal in the morning and a sandwich with bread at lunch and then pasta in the evening. I mean, that's just a lot of gluten to break down for anybody. So some people with uh, gluten sensitivity uh, do fine with oats. Others don't. So that's your call. Uh, and believe me, I'm sympathetic to that. I used to have wheat allergies. I took a probiotic and went away. I found out by accident. I was eating bread one day because it just looked so delicious. And I didn't get any stomach cramps. I mean, it was amazing. I couldn't believe it. I've stayed on those probiotics. Because <laughs> I had a lot of allergies. And they've basically gone away. I mean, it's pretty amazing. You, you, put, you do the right thing for your intestinal bacteria. And it really can help you with food allergies, food sensitivities, even pollen allergies. Because the healthy bacteria have everything to do with your digestive tract. And just a quick side note here. Uh, if you want to cater to your healthy bacteria in your, around your body, it's all over your body. They're everywhere. They're in your lungs. They're in your urinary tract. They're in women's breasts. They're all over the place. They're on your skin. Of course, they're in your intestines. Um, first of all, a really good diet. Lots of fresh fruit and vegetables and seeds and nuts and salads. Whole grains. Uh, this helps you feed bacteria in general. And then look at some fermented foods like kefir. You know, that's a fermented dairy. Or natto and tempeh and and miso, actual miso, we're not talking miso sauce that come from Japan, or, or high quality yogurt, you know, a lumpy yogurt. And by the way, if you get the smooth yogurt, they probably did that with gluten to get out the lumps from the yogurt. So that's another thing for you with your gluten problems. Uh, so let's get back to oats. I think it's a healthy food. It's filling. It lowers your cholesterol. Um, I get whole oats, uh, oatmeal, I should say. And we cook it. I grew up on porridge. I was born in Ireland, and boy, do I remember how delicious that porridge was over in Ireland. But my mother had to cook it. I mean, it took time. Okay, thanks for listening to our, our Invite Health podcast. Um, you can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts. Or you could just go to our homepage, invitehealth.com, and scroll down, and you'll see a big icon for podcast. And there's well over 200 there now. Uh, please subscribe. Please leave us a review. Um, you could follow us on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at Invite Health. And I hope to see you another time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. And always, like always, thank you for listening. And, oh, and by the way, just another thing. Uh, we're, we've started up a uh, basically a radio channel on our website, invitehealth.com. 
and uh, every day we're going to have a 10 o'clock program Monday through Friday. I have live radio on radio stations on Saturday. And then we have a 2 o'clock show on Sunday afternoon. So, and we'll, we're figuring out right now how to take phone calls on those live website radio programs. So thanks for listening. Jerry Hickey, Infant Health. Have a good day. Music